Well, my name is Ian Overton. I'm the editor of the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. We're a, a London-based not-for-profit organisation uh, that was set up in April 2010 uh, with uh, philanthropic funding from an organisation called the David and Elaine Potter Foundation. And since that time, we've had 38 front pages in the UK. Uh, we've worked with people like WikiLeaks. We've been broadcast with every single major uh, national broadcaster. We've made dispatches and panoramas. We've won an Amnesty Award, a Thomson Reuters Reporting Award. We've been shortlisted for a number of awards. Uh, we have a staff of around 15 to 20 freelancers and, and permanent staff. And uh, we publish in all media uh, that's broadcast in television or it's radio documentaries or print or online. Um, we're, we're fairly um, universal in our uh, platforms by which we get our stories out. In terms of um, what advice I'd give to young people trying to get into investigative journalism, um, I guess the most important element really is persistence, because I think that's what, that what really separates uh, investigative journalism from reportage or, or standard journalism, is the refusal to take anything at face value and the desire to consistently question and question again both the facts and figures that you're presented by uh, authorities um, as well as um, refusing to accept uh, possibly the universal mantra on a certain subject matter. Um, and it's quite interesting just today, for instance, the CIA have um, personally uh, uh, attacked us for being apologists for Al-Qaeda simply because we picked up on the fact that their drone strikes in Pakistan have killed civilians. So you have to be prepared to, uh, I guess, have a certain level of um, ambition in your projects. You have to uh, want to uh, push and pursue the investigation to its final conclusion. And ultimately, I'd say you have to have a passion for what you do. I don't think it's a, a day job, really. Um, I, I, uh, I'm often working until you know, the wee hours of the morning chasing stories and investigating things. Um, not because I think it's a job, it's just because that's just my inherent nature. So I think um, it's difficult to turn someone into an investigative journalist. I think I don't think there's any magical wand, and certainly there's, there's a limit uh, in terms of specific skills you have to accrue. I think it's much more of a personality-driven thing. Um, you need to be uh, a good writer, whatever broadcast you're going out on, because uh, even if in, in, in television you still have to write good scripts. I think you have to have a passion for detail um, and be able to sit down and read quite substantial amounts of, of information and transform that into something that's um, succinct and, and, and uh, to the point. Um, and you know, as all uh, of the, the, the most well-known investigative journalists in, working in the UK, I think um, you know, there, it's almost like a personality deficit. You have to be uh, obsessive in, in, in the pursuit of the, the agenda. You have to be single-minded um, and bullish. Um, I would say, I, I wouldn't put this adjective on myself, but I think you, know, you have to be quite brave as well. Now, um, I think some people go to war zones and report in, in hostile environments, and I think that requires quite a considerable level of of, of desire that the story comes above, um, you know, personal lens, so to speak, um, and to, to a large degree, I think that I'd say that the difference between um, investigative journalism and some other forms of journalism, particularly some of the more, um, you know, punchy uh, columnist journalism or the some broadcast journalism, is I think to a large degree you're much more interested in the story than you are in publicising yourself. I think, I think most of the journalists I work with, um, at the end of the day, they are journalists. They're not presenters or, they, you know, they don't have agents.